Coming up on the program, it is time to harvest our celery. We've had a phenomenal crop, and I'll show you some that are going to seed. And we're going to harvest a yakon. I'll explain what it is and what you do with it. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored by the following. MIGardener.com, over 300 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents. MIGardener.com. Sioux Growing Supply, located in Wausau, Wisconsin, focusing on certified leaf compost, an excellent amendment for poor soil. With their new garden blend, improving soil structure in clay and sandy soil, great for creating new garden beds. Also available from Sioux, pre-filled trays and pots with professional potting soil mix or organic rice hull base potting soil mix. Bag and bulk of certified leaf compost also available. Visit Sioux Growing Supply. Com. Stop before you dig. Call Diggers Hotline first. Call three business days before you dig. It's the law. It's completely free and it's for your safety. Know what's below before you dig. It's your responsibility. Call Diggers Hotline or visit them at diggershotline.com. HappyLeafLED.com. Commercial grade grow light with a home gardener's affordability. No fans, no motors. Simply plug in and grow. Great for seed starting to lettuce to full grown tomatoes. All indoors. HappyLeafLED.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. We are in the back uh, side of the large garden and we're going to harvest celery. We've had a phenomenal harvest, a phenomenal crop here of Utah tall celery. Now, we do have some going to seed, and that is what this looks like. The plants have gotten stressed. We had some drought uh, conditions for a while. This was, there was no irrigation put on this at all. They just did naturally what they do, and some plants will go to that stress state and immediately put seed on. Now, also, if it's, uh, when you plant this in the spring, there's techniques in when to plant this. If there's too many cold nights as a seedling, it'll go to a stress mechanism uh, de degree and we'll put seed uh, pods on there as well. Now seeds are very, very small and you get a lot of them and you could, I, we could save seeds from these, but it's just easier to go to migardener.com and, and pick from their 450 varieties uh, they have available and just get the celery that, uh, seeds that I'm, I'm looking for. So you can harvest this. You can let this sit for a while uh, once it gets to a certain temperature at night, freezing, that type of thing, it's not going to uh, do very well. You can let this go and it will come back next year and that's when the, generally the seeds will develop on it there biannual. So you can harvest it with a knife, a saw, a scissors, a snips. What you want to do here, and I'll, I'll get close to this one here, is these are large, large. I'm going to pull this up just to show you what I'm doing with here. Oh. That's the root system. Now this seed is so, is, is, is essentially the size of a grain of sand is what we're planting. Now what we have here is we have the main trunk and then what it looks like we have offshoots off of that main root. This is a tremendous uh, celery plant here. 18 inches tall, almost 20 inches. Now what we can do here is, I'm gonna saw this off at the roots and, there we go. Now you're, you're not, these are not the, the type of celery that you're gonna buy at the grocery store. So it's got more of an intense flavor. They do have some deep ribs there. Uh, there's some bad, there's one here, a leaf that's no good. But this has got some good structure. Again, you want to harvest this right before the weather really turns off nasty. Like if tomorrow's going to be a snowstorm and your temperatures have been mild up to that point, that's when you want to harvest it. You don't want to set, let it set, uh, my recommendations, past that snowstorm because you're not going to have much celery. So I'm going to go harvest all of this and then when we get to the seed pods, uh, we'll take a look at that. But what can you do with this? Well, it does have some shelf life if you put it in the fridge. What we have found is you can chop it up and freeze it, use it in soups and stews, that type of way. Uh, also, if you don't like celery, you shouldn't plant a whole lot because there's a lot of celery there and there's a lot, of, you can dehydrate it, the, the leaves as well. There's a lot of things you can do with it. So I'm going to harvest this and when we get to the, the seed pods, I'll 
we'll take a look at that. So I've made the executive decision, instead of harvesting, I think there's like 25 plants here. We're not expecting any severe damaging, cold, traumatic weather. So I'm just gonna harvest what we're gonna use right now. I do wanna harvest this one here that's going to seed. I'm gonna cut it off at the base here. Now, if you leave, like I'm leaving, that right there in the ground. That is going to re-sprout next spring, so be aware of that. If you don't want that to happen, you just, and that's gonna produce uh, seeds, but you can get an early, like a double crop off of it, essentially, before it goes to seed. Let's talk about the seeds here. I've got some uh, structure, or some celery here that's got some bad leaves. What occurred here is the central stalk, I might as well just break this apart because that's what's gonna happen here. It got stressed, and then it put this seed pot on. Now, left alone, these will blossom and produce multiple hundreds of thousands of little seeds. Uh, this can be put in the compost pile. It probably will still go to a flower seed state, but that's what's occurring on that. And if you leave that alone, that is just going to flourish, and you'll have a lot of celery seeds. So if you don't like a lot of celery seeds, you can, when you see this develop, uh, if we, I've seen this develop last couple of months or last couple of weeks. I could go in there and snip this back. Actually, it was developed a couple of months ago because it got to this point the last couple of weeks. You can trim this back and almost try to prevent it from going to seed to put more energy in the, in the plant instead of the, the seed production. So celery, it's a very easy crop that we have found to grow here in Zone 5A. Might be a challenge for some of uh, you in the warmer climates during the summer months, but it's also something you can experiment with and probably grow very successfully over your cooler portions of the year. Sweet potatoes can be grown in a variety of different regions and ways. We're in Zone 5A here. We've tried to grow them in the ground with some success. We found better success in containers and we've got two different examples of that. Now, we have never grown a state fair record sweet potato, but we simply use slips off of organic potatoes in which we purchased from the local grocery store. We're growing them in the, this is here is a 15 gallon root maker, uh, tr uh, tr root trapper two. And I see potatoes perky, uh, popping out of the ground here. So we're gonna see what we have. These are some smaller ones, obviously. I'm gonna. That one broke there. All right, I'm gonna set these right there. I've got one here. That's a not a bad one. Now, keep in mind, this particular area here where these grow bags are, minimal to no m maintenance on them at all. Whatever happened to them has happened to them. We didn't go and water these on a regular every third day or any type of that. Whatever that happened to them is, is what occurred. So let's see if we have any more potatoes in here. You can see the shredded paper, we layered that in there as kind of a moisture retention uh, mechanism. Well, what do we got here? I don't want to break these. All right. Let's see what else we have here. Oh. Now the reason why we're harvesting is because the nighttime temperatures are 40, 35 to 40. We got something else here. Oh my. Oh, that was the one that broke that we pulled out right away. Let's see, take that, throw that in the garden. Okay, so that was off a 15 gallon grow bag, minimal to no, well, zero, really no maintenance we put into it, no effort, which is way better than the ground ones that we had at the sister-in-law's backyard that we actually were maintaining and watering. So let's go over to a high five from Rootmaker and see what those look like in that grow bag. So this is a high five uh, root maker. It's designed to air prune the roots, and that's the purpose of all of these grow bags. These are, uh, they were invented for tree de root development, but they found that it worked very, very good in the vegetable gardening world. So we threw, I'll, pull, I'll snap this off here. We just threw a couple of slips in here, and this one was really no, uh, no effort as well, and it's grown relatively 
well. So I'm just going to take and dump it right here, and let's see what we. Oh my! Let's see what we have. Uh, that's been. That's a nice one that I would consider nice. Uh, uh, let's, I'll just dump this over here. Okay. You can see that it air prunes the roots. Once the roots hit the air pocket, they will shoot off and create more fibrous roots other places. So I didn't know if that would work well with the, the root of the, the sweet potato or not, but clearly we have some evidence here that it will work. So just imagine if they, we would have maintained these, they had good, rich, certified leaf compost in them. And if we would have maintained them, kept water to them, took care of them, we really would have had good sweet potatoes. But even with no effort, we did get some sweet potatoes in these grow bags. <music> Yacon is a South American root crop related to somewhat of the sunflower and the Jerusalem artichoke. It, when harvested in good scenarios, it will look and mimic like a sweet potato. It has the texture of, of a watery apple, watery carrot, a little bit of watermelon in it. There's a lot of things you can do with it. You can make Yacon syrup. You can dehydrate them and make Yacon chips. You can actually just simply eat them as is. Uh, they have, they're, they're really best grown in South America. As I said, that's where they come from. They take six months to grow to produce a flower on them. That's where you get the reference of the sunflower relation. We've had mild success this year. Last year we planted 14, we planted 20 Yacon plants from the rhizomes is how you propagate those and you can save those in sand in your attic or basement over the winter and regrow uh, them in the spring. Also, you can keep them in the back of your fridge in some sand, damp, not wet, and that will also preserve them. Last year we grew 20 of them, got 100 pounds off of them. That's about a six pound, somewhere in that range, a ratio, oh, actually there's 24 plants, about a six pound ratio uh, per plant. In South America, 15 to 30 pounds is not unheard of per plant. So they will grow, you plant them a little earlier than, the, than your potatoes, or your, your, you plant them a little earlier than your tomatoes, and you let them in, grow until the frost kills them back. They will get five to six foot tall on a really good year. Last year was a phenomenal year. They were somewhere around six to seven foot tall in our gardens. You can go back and look at that video. These are between three and four foot tall. They have not totally got fried by the frost. You can see some frost damage, but these plants are still growing. That's why I'm going to leave most of them in the ground. I am going to harvest one here, and we'll see what we have. Uh, you can see what's going on here. What we found is they kind of are related. They kind of grow in the instance of like sugar cane. Sugar cane farmers will take and actually splice and cut and then plant the actual stalk in the ground and it will root. We found that to be true in one of our indoor growing experiments last year. We just stuck a stalk in the ground and it actually rooted. So that was interesting and uh, good to know. So um, I'm just going to see what I have here. They will grow in mild, uh, decent soil. They don't have to, it doesn't have to be super rich compost to grow. Now I'm going to try to do my best not to damage what might be under the ground here. So I'm just going to pull up. Okay. We do have some tubers. That's better than what I expected. So again, these look like sweet potatoes. They have a very sweet smell to them. We found last year we had some three and four pound tubers that when we pulled them out of the ground, we heard popping noises. Well, they were expanding and cracking the skin on them. They were actually kind of breaking open slightly. Now, I talked about the rhizomes. These are the rhizomes, the purplish items you see here. You can also see some of these rhizomes have started to sprout again. Right there, you can kind of see what I'm talking about, the splitting of the actual tuber as it's being extracted from the ground. The stress of it releases. So what we'll do is we'll clean these up. You can just pop these off, cut them off, and I will cut 
all but the rhizomes. You want to leave the rhizomes all intact. You can find these under the, I believe, the tool tab on our website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, where we go year round on how to grow and harvest, store, and, and preserve the tubers, or the tubers as well as the, the rhizomes. And we'll put these in a bucket of sand and put them in our attic, which is relatively cool. And then we will plant these again in the spring. You do not, uh, you can store these in the fridge a little bit. We found we put them in the stairwell of the attic or if you have a very cool basement like mimicking a root cellar, that will work as well. What we've learned is the smaller ones like this, you want to go ahead and, we'll go ahead and peel, blanch, and freeze. You'll find these also in the Hispanic or Latino area of your grocery store pre-frozen. So we'll do that with the smaller ones. The larger ones we can let set in that attic stairwell for a longer time but the smaller ones they'll dehydrate quicker and they're a pain to peel and you lose a lot of the the legitimacy the the goodness out of them so if you've never grown yacons before they are a harder crop to find in the spring you can find the actual plants you can buy them online and get them shipped to your place and if done right followed by our recommendations you can grow these year after year after year after year just like jerusalem artichokes uh, just like uh, a lot of uh, like tubers, a uh, tuberous plant. So thanks for joining me. Join me again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Baird and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.